Wednesday. Good morning, YouTube. How is everyone? I'm so excited to be talking about our subject for the day. I don't, I don't, do I look? I don't know. For some reason, and I can't figure out what it is, but the coloring is different in here today. And for like the last five minutes, I've been looking around. Hello, everyone. I've been looking around and trying to figure out, did I forget to turn on a light? And it's just, there's that one. Hmm. Well, we're just going to go with it. We're just going to go with the flow because, again, I'm not going to make you all suffer over me being like, you guys just hang on there and let me just push some buttons. So we're going to go with what we have today and happy menopause and makeup conversation. I, I'm so excited to be talking to you about this. And it's, it's really kind of, it's been an interesting journey because, you know, a lot of times we talk about, there are certain things that we find that we don't talk about, that's what I'm trying to say. There's just certain things like, it's like if something happens to our bodies, and I don't know if it's like a woman thing or what, but we get like super like, we can't talk about that. And I'm all about, yeah, no, no, we can. And even I was like, I posted a TikTok yesterday talking about this subject, and I've been waiting for somebody to say something rude, and nobody has said anything rude. So I think that this is um, a subject that we will touch on more often. All right. But first, I, I got all sorts of things to tell you. 33 years ago today, yours truly um, was in labor and going to be giving birth to her her son. Ah, that's me. It's Robert's birthday today. I became a mom 33 years ago today. And it's been a really fun, um, it's been a fun morning so far. And it's been, a, a, you know, it, it's been a journey. Let's just put it that way. And Robert, its birthday is three days before mine. So we definitely have that Leo energy working together. And I was thinking about it in the shower when I was getting ready today, because I know if you watch any of the videos of our podcasts, sometimes Robert and I, yeah, I've been telling him all the happy birthday wishes. But I know Robert and I sometimes on our podcasts, especially, we have a little bit of tension. And we have really been working very hard the last six months to rebuild our, to build a relationship, all right? Um, I was an alcoholic when I was raising them, and it, it's, it's damaging. I, that's all I can say. It is super damaging. Uh, I had it done to me, and I turned around, and I did it to my kids. But that's not what this is about. So Robert and I have, we clash often. And I was thinking about it on a little bit dip, deeper level today. And when I was in the, when I was drinking, Robert was in charge a whole lot. You know, I would be out drinking after work and he would be making Brandon dinner. You know, he always felt like he had to step up in place of me when I kind of lost my way. And so, he's always, he's always had like this overwhelming sense of responsibility. And then I get sober and I, the roles were really weird. It was like, he was more in charge than, I wouldn't say more in charge, but he was more well-established than I was because I was like new in my sobriety. Thank you so much for all of his birthday wishes. He's going to love it. But I was new in my sobriety. So I was like trying to get my footing and then my sobriety journey continued. And then I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to, I'm going to step back into the, um, the mother role and I'm going to prove my, my, my spot here. And Robert and I were clashing because Robert was like, dude, I've been doing this for a long time. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to give up this, this role. And I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. I'm here. I'm sober and I want to do it. So we definitely clashed. And it's over probably the like the last six months, we have really gotten very real with each other. And there's been a lot of hurt feelings. There's been a lot of growth. And it was, this is the first birthday in a really long time 
that we're celebrating his birthday and then mine's on Saturday, but we're selling his birth, we're celebrating his birthday in a way where he's really seen for who he is. And I mean, we, Brandon and I got him a white pair of Crocs with some headlights and some charms. And he was so excited for that. And it was just, it's been a really cool journey. So I, I just want to let you out there know that if there's any relationship that you're in that you're trying to rebuild, don't give up. It's just, you have to have these conversations. You have to have these moments of growth. And you know what? And sometimes you get your feelings hurt, but it is worth it. And I think the biggest, and the thing that has helped our relationship the most is the simple fact that I am no longer trying to reclaim the past. The past is the past. You know what? Robert did a great job of holding the fort down while I was off doing my addiction shit. Excuse me. Oops, sorry, YouTube. While I was doing my addiction stuff. But that doesn't mean that I now, but now I'm the mom of the family and I'm very comfortable in this role and I no longer have to prove myself to anybody. I'm the mom and I know it. And ever since I've stopped trying to prove anything, our relationship has gotten so much better. And it's been a really, really fun journey. And so Robert's got that going on. And then Brandon's moving. Brandon's going to be moving to another state um, with his girlfriend. And he's got a career that he's going to be starting. He's going to be a correctional officer. And you know, work his way into becoming a police officer. And I couldn't be more proud. You know, and it's, it's again, just looking at my children and being like, there is growth and there is hope after addiction is the best birthday present I could ever have. So we started off on a, uh, we're starting off good. And okay, so Valerie, who's, who comes on here a lot, she sent me an email the other day and she's like, Lonnie, I saw this outfit from Free People. You have to have it. And I'm like, you're right, Kathy. I do have to have that. And I'm wearing it and I'm going to show it to you. Now, I'm telling you a little story before I show it to you because I'm laying the groundwork of, I want you all, if you do this, I want you to know we all do this. But I saw this outfit, stinking cute. Absolutely love it. I knew I had to have it. Tried it on. And yeah, Brandon has made huge strides. Brandon, you know, neither one of my children had it easy. And I am just beyond proud of both of them. But I, I, I got the outfit yesterday. I tried it on and I thought it was cute. Knew I was going to keep it. Put it on this morning and there was a voice inside of my head, and that voice was like, ooh, honey, what, what, are you trying to be 20? And for just a moment, there was like a, I was like, maybe I shouldn't wear this. And then I mentally just gave myself a backhand. I was like, come, don't you think that way? And I'm like, yeah, don't you think that way? So I had to, you, I, I, was, I was kind of anticipating this little bit of a, like a mean self-talk kind of, because this outfit kind of is pushing my boundaries of something new. And it's, it's, it's something I'm going to wear and it's something I really like. So let me show you my outfit. You ready? Da, 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 da. This is the drum roll. There you go. It's a free people denim jumper. It's supposed to be a tunic. I'm so short. It's a mini dress. And I'm wearing them with a pair of Doc Martens. See? And I, like I said, I had a moment. I had a moment where I was like, I don't know, Lonnie. And I'm over that moment. I really like my outfit. My outfit is comfortable. It's fun. I can do so many things with this jumper because what I want to do is in the wintertime when it's cold, I want to put a black turtleneck underneath with like a pair of black straight leg jeans and then some high boots. Thank you, Sandy. Thank you, Teresa Kelly. 
I mean, I can do all sorts of things. Oh, I was also thinking on my walk, I think I need to get like a fitted um, white button down. And I thought that that would look really cute under this again with like a, a pair of black. You know what? I could just wear high boots and this and like a white button down. But I really wanted to show you my outfit because um, I, I if you stop yourself from wearing what you want, then it's 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 a it's a tragedy you know it's something that we should not rob ourselves of that because i want to show you something because i have a picture that i put on let me see oh yeah here it is i want to show you this picture okay my kids were probably hmm, three and five and look at this outfit i want to show you this outfit hold on because this is the exact same outfit that i'm wearing and I was probably 28, 29 maybe. But look at this outfit. You're going to love it. Okay. All right. And let me move this down just a little bit. Okay. So check out this outfit. So that's me. And that's Brandon. And he's probably what? Like, so that was in 90... In 96, that's probably like 97, 98 maybe. And I got this cute little denim jumper from Express. And I'm wearing it with just a white t-shirt underneath. And then these right here, these are Doc Martens. And I have these boots still in my closet today. And then I just had my little white socks. And so I'm sitting here and I'm looking at this picture and I'm like, Lonnie, you're like, again, like 28, 27, 28 years old. But that's me. That's my style. This person right here, I've grown. I'm a more confident person, but I still have the same style. And I don't think that we should lose that style when we just because we have a birthday. And so I just I was like, if that's not the exact same outfit, I don't know what is. And I just wanted to just just be on here and just tell you, do not stop yourself. Do not. It, it is a gift that we just need to give ourselves. Kelly says black turtleneck, black tights, um, docks or knee boots and a black moto jacket or the free people vegan leather coat you were coveting. Yes, but th they don't have that one. Hello, Christina. Um, Teresa says, I saw some free people at Nordstrom's and I was surprised to see how big their extra large, um, the extra large and large blouses. You mean, yeah, they run big. I mean, this is a size extra small. So they're, depending on the style and depending on what it is that you're looking for, you know, they're, I, I, even though that they only go up to extra large, they, they are very, very roomy. So hopefully, you know, you can um, look at those too. And for tomorrow, just so you know, I am on a mission to find um, size inclusive coats. There are, I, I, there wasn't anything that we saw yesterday, so we are going to be looking at some fashion tomorrow. And one of the things that I'm going to be looking for is the um, the coats because I want to find a, a cool winter coat. And I actually um, I had a brand reach out to me, and they're like, "Hey, Lonnie, you know what? You can pick three things off of our our website." And I picked three things. And I'm not going to tell you what they are. I'm not going to show you until I get them. But they are like, I, I mean, I was floored. I was like, these are so cute. And I'm just so excited to get them and show you. So that's a, that's a, Elfie, hello. It, how, oh, well, hello. Okay, so let's talk about menopause and makeup. Enough about birthdays, enough about jumpers, enough about, enough about. Let's talk about, um. Uh, let's talk about menopause. Elfie says 54 menopausal and got my first tattoo three days ago. Very cool. All right. I'm dying to know what'd you get and where'd you put it? Okay. So well, let's talk about menopause and, um, how it affects our makeup. And what it does is for me, it made me change how I looked at me, how I looked at makeup. 
I mean, makeup when I was younger, it would be something to where I didn't even really think twice about like how heavy the makeup was, how I just put it on and I went. And ever since I started getting hot flashes, I'll be there and I would have on like a heavy um, foundation and it would just, it turned almost into like, it, it wasn't absorbing into my skin. Let's just put it that way. My foundation, when I would look at it in the sun, it almost looked like I was plastic. It had no natural movement and it was not absorbing into my skin. So I'm like, oh, that's not going to work. That's too heavy. So I switched to a, it was kind of like a powder foundation. It was, it was the powder and the foundation all blended into one. So it was kind of a powder and it was kind of a, um, a liquidy feel. So I put that on and then what happened is, is I was having the hot flash and it was like turning my makeup into paste because I don't know about you all, but when I have a hot flash, I actually, I, it's, I, it's shine on. I mean, I'm just like, and I, I can see the glow on my face and I literally feel like I, um, am covered in just heat. And I was the other day I was out, um, thrifting and I had a hot flash and I was like, so what are you going to do, Lonnie? You know, you're going to have these, they're not going to go away until they decide to go away. What are you going to do about them? And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to consider them my superpower because at this moment, my body temperature is probably 302 degrees. I pretty much feel like I could, um, do anything at this point because I have all of this just menopausal rage and I was like yeah if somebody came in here and they started harassing the people that worked here I'd just be like I'm having a hot flash Arr! and it cracked myself up and I was like yeah, you know what? I'm not going to sit there and be like, oh, you know what? I'm having a hot flash. I'm going to go hide in the corner. I'm going to embrace it as my superhero power because I'm telling you right now, when my body temperature is that high, I seriously feel like I could be like a crime fighting superhero to where I just swoop in and I protect the innocent. And so I just I decided to look at menopause that way. So Elfie says, I got a watercolor. Um, is it a Sergeant Major fish in a swirl of water on my mid forearm wrist size? It's like the happiest moments of my childhood in one spot. I absolutely love that. I think that that's, and that's what tattoos are all about. And that's what our journey is all about. And I absolutely love that. Um, so Julie says, did you start having hot flashes after your hysterectomy? You know, it was weird. I started having hot flashes when I was drinking and I was having nighttime, just waking up drenched in sweat. And I don't know if that was because of my drinking or if it was hormone hormonal. So I'm a little, I'm not really hundred percent sure of that. But once I quit drinking, they did subside. So just, hello, Valerie, you missed the outfit. All right, everybody, here's Valerie. She's the one that inspired this outfit. Now let me show you. Do, do, do. Look how cute. She's the one that sent me the email and showed me the outfit. Elfie says, thank you for your channel. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that very much. So I, again, I'm not 100% sure. I, I think it was just kind of a combination of everything. So I quit drinking and they, subsi they subsided to the point where, you know, I didn't have them very often. Then I had my hysterectomy. I had a, um, I, I had fibroids so bad. I did not realize how bad they were because you have to remember when I was drinking, I wasn't taking care of myself and I didn't go to the doctors that often. So by the time I, um, I got sober and I started taking care of myself, I'm like, there's something wrong. And I had fibroids so bad. I just had a constant menstrual 
period. I just never stopped. And I was incredibly anemic. So they, I had my hysterectomy and I had, I think they said like 90% of my, my uterus was full of fibroids. So I had to have that. But once I had it, um, I, I didn't really start having hot flashes like pretty much daily until a couple, until probably last year. And they come and go. I mean, sometimes I'll, I'll have them like all day long. Sometimes I don't. But I will tell you right now, and this might not be the popular, um, the popular thing to say, but if you are having a lot of, of um, hot flashes, you might want to cut down on your alcohol consumption because it does make a, a difference. What we eat, what we drink, the foods we make, I personally think there is a correlation between both of those. So, all right, so I have my hot flashes. It's my superhero power, you know, I, that's all it is. And what was happening again is that every time I would have a hot flash, I get sweaty. Some people don't get sweaty, but I get sweaty. I get hot and sweaty. And I was using those powder products. You know, my blush was powder. I had that powder plus um, foundation. And it was, it was not working together. There was not one thing that was working. So I came up with this, I, I came up with a little system and that's what we're talking about today. And I switched everything over to a liquid based makeup. I mean, sometimes I'll wear powder eyeshadow, but I always put on a, um, a base. I always put on a, what's it called? A primer. Because what happens is even though I, I'm not sweating on my eyeballs, I do, um, it does have a tendency to smear around because I'm a big hot sweaty mess. So I switched everything over to liquid. And also to, we get into such this rut of where we think that more is better. It, we're actually, when we get older, less is more. And by that, I mean, if we have fine lines and wrinkles on our face, if we try to cover them up and I don't care how expensive your foundation is, you're not going to cover up all your fine lines and wrinkles. You're going to end up accentuating them because the makeup, that real heavy foundation is going to sit right in your creases and it's just going to be like, hey, I'm a big old pool of wrinkle here full of foundation and it's not it's just not as comfortable looking. I see sometimes I'll see ladies in the store and they just have so much foundation on. And I'm just like, sweetheart, you gotta just, you gotta moisturize more and foundation less. But they don't ask me my opinion, so I'm not saying anything. But you wanna have kind of just a young, I'm gonna say a young, natural kind of look. And less is going to be more. Now, I still like full coverage. Even though I wear a BB cream, I do a full coverage of, a, of my face. And I do, you know what, let me show you really quick. I'll show you a little bit. I'll show you how I do it. And then I'll show you the products. I do have everything listed down below. Christina says, girl, I did it. I buzzed off 18, almost 19 inches of hair. I love it. <gasps> I donated all of it to, for wigs to kit two wigs for kids. That is amazing. And I was right, wasn't I? The buzz cut is amazing. I mean, it is, it gives you just such a whole new sense of, of freedom and badassness. It's, it's insane. It's something that I cannot, it's sometimes it's hard to describe the feeling, but it is a amazing. Now let me show you this video here really quick. I'm going to have to make sure I turn off the sound because I keep on getting in trouble for playing sounds here and I don't want to do that. So let me find it because I'm going to show you how I apply. That's not me. So let me find it here. Look, 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 look. Found it there, found it there. Uh, where am I? I have that. I, oh, here I am. Da, da. Okay. And I'm going to bring you back over. I'm going to do this. 
Oop, I'm going to make sure that the sound is off. All right, so this is how I do my makeup. Let me bring you back here. All right. Mm -hmm. And a one and a two. So what I do is first, okay, I use, uh, I use a contour and a concealer first. And what I did is, let me stop that right there. Stop. Okay, so I'll go in with my Wet n Wild. This is a contour stick. I like to use it more as a bronzer. A contour stick will actually change the shape of your face. And truthfully, I don't need to change my shape. I just like to give my face a little bit of a dimension. And I like to give my face a little bit of a sun-kissed kind of look. So what I'll do is I go in with my contour stick and I put it right along, like see the dots on my forehead. Because ideally what you want is you want a kind of a fresh looking skin where it looks like you've been out in the sun without actually being out in the sun. And you wanna take the idea of the sun coming down. So you have your sun here. I had a little bit of a sun on my cheeks and then along my jawline. And so you can, and I put it here for a little bit of a highlight. I've seen TikToks out there where they're like, if you put a little bit of contour right here in the corner of your eye, it's almost like a little bit of an eye lift, but I'll go through and I put all my little dots on with my contour stick. Then the next color I use is again, a Wet n Wild product. And this is the easiest to use. Now I'll finish this and then I'll tell you why I, I really like this product. So this is nude for thought and I'll go in and I'll put this all where around the contour stick but a little bit under and this is where I want highlighted I want to highlight my forehead I highlight right down my nose I go underneath my cheek line that I just drew and then I'll do my little chin and down my nose so I'll have all of these on but we don't stop there what we do is now you can put your blush and I use the NYX Sweet Cheeks and this is in Baby Doll. Again, a liquid makeup. You can put it on underneath your BB cream. You can put it on top of your BB cream. It's really however you like to do your makeup, but I'll put this on also. So I have all my dots on. And then what I do is I take a real light um, BB cream. And I have to tell you, I really like this Maybelline BB cream. I get the shade 120, which is medium sheer. It has sunscreen in it. And what I do is I start to blend everything all together. Now, the rule of thumb, if you put your little dots on, is that you go with the lightest to the darkest. So you want to do your, you want to do all of your white little dots first, and then you get that all blended in and you blend, 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 blend. See how I'm blending it all away. And then what I do, Ooh, I don't know how I did that. I got, I got makeup on it. Let's go back a little bit. Mm -mm -mm. So then what I do, once I have my brown and my white dots all connected, I'll go in with a different with a different sponge and then I do my blush. You want to get a little sponge and you want to make sure that you get around your eye, under your eye, and around your nose all blended in. Because when I first started this journey, I didn't do that and I was having little pools of um, concealer underneath my eyes. So I have learned that you have to go in with a smaller sponge. And what this does is it gives me a full face coverage, but it's super light, super duper light. Okay, um, question. All right. Da, 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 da. All right. Da, 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 da. Okay, Christina says, yes, it's so free. Mrs. Cox says, I still can't cut my hair because I love it so much. And that's just it. it it's the whole thing. Is, it's like anybody's hair journey is an individual journey. I would never tell anybody that they have to have hair or they, they, they shouldn't have hair. I mean, somebody could look at me and be like, you really need to grow your hair out. And I'd be like, mm -mm. and I would no more do that than to tell somebody to buzz your hair. And let me make a little, like a little bit of a, um, 
second thought on that because if you want to buzz your hair, I'm telling you to do it. If you're like, that's not my style, then absolutely 100% don't do it. Um, do, do, do. So Teresa says, um, yeah, if you love your hair, don't cut it. Absolutely, Teresa. She also says, I'm using Murad like you recommended and I love it. Um, it gave me smooth looking, youthful look. That, so you use that Murad resurgence. That is a great product. I'm going to be talking about, um, ooh, bye, Lauren, and um, I will see you tomorrow. I love Murad, but I am going to show you a couple of other products today. That's just a little bit of a, um, a little bit of a less of a price tag. That's what I'm trying to say. Mrs. Cox says, question, do you have any recommendations for first time tattoo? Should I start small or big? I'm still scared to get a tattoo because of, um, commitment reasons, but I'm sad if I, if I will regret it. No, you know what? I personally say go small, just get a nice little tattoo. And here's the thing is if you get a tattoo that actually means something to you, that has a significant meaning, maybe a good time in your life, a time that you need help getting over just anything, or just like, Hey, you know what? I want a timestamp today. Just get a small little intimate tattoo. If you like it, get more. If you don't, then you just have that one little tattoo and just be proud of yourself for being brave and getting it. Okay. Um, Lauren says, why don't you try those temporary sticker tattoos and see if you like the tattoo or not? Yeah. And here's the thing though. It's, it's like, for me, it's like, again, if my tattoos, I, I don't have tattoo regrets because I don't regret my life path. Whatever form or whatever reason I was thinking about that tattoo for that moment, I was thinking about that tattoo at the moment and that's time stamped on my life. So I, I'm just going to go with that. Julie says, I would still like a close up tutorial of your eyeshadow. Absolutely, Julie. We can 100% do that. And I will for sure do that tomorrow, not tomorrow, but we'll do that next week for sure. And the thing is, is that with my eyeshadow is I'm always layering. My eyeshadow is never one color. In fact, today I started off with like a real gold bronze kind of liquid eyeshadow. And it was it wasn't jiving with my my outfit, with the rest of my makeup. So I went in with a brown eyeshadow and I darkened it up and it really saved the day. So a lot of times it's multiple layers of different eyeshadow that I change, but I 100% will do that next week. Kathy says, good idea, Lauren. Start with something small, maybe something you could add to in the future. I say start, start small, absolutely. Um, okay. So Lauren says I have to go. Oh yes. Mrs. Cox says those temporary tattoos are kind of junky and they make my skin feel weird. Well, you know what? They're just temporary tattoos, but here's the thing. It's like, if, if you really truthfully want a tattoo, you're going to get one. If you kind of can't figure out if you want one, then perhaps you're not ready for one and you should wait until it 100% is something you want to do everybody's tattoo journey is different and everybody's tattoo journey starts at a different time and ends at a different time. So what I would do is don't get it until it is just something that you absolutely 100% know in the bottom of your heart you want. And it, again, it's not for everybody and there's no time. There's no expiration date. If you, if you find that you can't have that desire to get it now, wait. And one day you'll wake up and you'll just be like, yeah, you know what? Today's the day. Today's the day that I want that tattoo. And that's the day to get it. But if you just don't have that driving kind of like desire for that tattoo, I say, don't get it. it, it it's just not for, you're, you're not going to feel comfortable in your own skin. Um, it, it's, it's just it. It says, I really want a tattoo. So I really want a tattoo, but I'm so scared. I can't handle the pain. It's not that bad. It's all it is literally not that bad. And get yourself some mad rabbit numbing cream and you can go in that way. And it, it, here's the thing, it's, it's, it's if you want it, nothing's gonna stop you. There, the pain won't stop you, the design won't stop you, nothing will stop you. So just know, you know, bite the bullet, go in and get it. Um, some, so Julie says some of your, your areas, your bodies do not hurt as much. Yeah. And here's, and again, it's like, 
because remember that episode we did where it was like tattoo court and that lady had those tattoos and it seemed like she was getting them for the wrong reasons. You just want to make sure that you're getting your tattoos for the absolute right reason. And I say, Mrs. Cox, if you really want it, you can handle the pain. Don't worry about it. Just get it. There you go. Christina says, I have a lot of tattoos and only one hurt and that was on my foot. Foot tattoos are no bueno. Okay, so I asked my tattoo artist, I asked both of them, and they both said the exact same answer. But I'll give you a little trivia question. Do you know the number one most painful spot to get a tattoo? You can guess, and I'll tell you if you are right. So getting back to the makeup. Hi, G now, how are you? So getting back to our makeup, you want to stay away from any sort of powdered makeup because it's just not going to blend into your skin. And another thing that I noticed that I was doing, um, I was wondering of getting a finger tattoo, do they hurt more? If you really want my brutally honest answer on that, I do not think hands, fingers, neck, or faces are, should be your first tattoo. To me, they're a rite of passage and they, they come with time. So I would be, um, I, I would wait on that. I would just get like a small little wrist tattoo and then call it a day. Okay, so Valerie says ribs, no. Kelly says palm of hand. Those hurt, but that wasn't their answer. G now says, I'm a little late, but curious if you have tried ret Retin-A. I just started it and it's drying my skin so bad. Okay, I have not, but I'm going to give you a suggestion for that. Julie says, I really want a foot tattoo, Christina, but if it's anything like my kneecap, I do not know if I can handle it. Um, you can handle it, Julie. Julie says, my guess is kneecap or skull. Both very painful, but was not their answer. Okay, um, hold on here. We're gonna help G now. Okay, so let's see. Now, Retin A. Do, do, do. I want to make sure that I am talking about the right product. Your hand flower tattoo was the most painful. No, it, it, it was bad, um, but it was not the most painful. And okay, so let's see here. Retin A. Okay. Um, technically, Retin A do the same thing, but Retin A. Retinol. Okay, so retinol is a much weaker than retin A, and it's first has to be converted. Okay. All right. So here's what you're going to have to do. If it's irritating your skin or if it's drying it out, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to dilute it a little bit, and you're going to want to wear it with like a moisturizer because it might be too harsh on your skin. I was talking to my esthetician about like the retinol products, and she told me, she's like, Lonnie, if you use that on your neck and it's too hard if it starts to make your skin red, dried out, if it started any sort of irritation. She said, wear it with a moisturizer just to cut down on the harshness. So what I would, what I would recommend is to do something like that. You'll still get the same benefits. It's just not going to be intense. So try diluting it a little bit with a moisturizer. Um, Kathy says ankle. Nope. Um, let's see here. Claire says the flabby bits of your arm hurt. Yes, it did. This part right here was insane. Um, Valerie says I had my ankle tattoo hurt like hell. Yes. Uh, D Shepherd. Okay. Then which spot usually less painful when getting a tattoo? Your forearms. You, you know what? I could fall asleep during a forearm tattoo. Absolutely no pain. Outer part right here. No pain. Inside, pain, my collarbones, pain, behind the ear, pain, stomach hurt, my lower back didn't hurt, my shins, surprisingly, did not hurt that bad, my calves are just another level of insanity. But I will tell you right now, their answer was the buttocks the flabby part of your behind is nothing but nerve endings. And they said that everybody that they have tattooed, they've had tattoos. In fact, Austin is covered from head to toe 
And the last part that he has to tattoo is his behind. And he's been putting that off because of it, it hurts. So your is the most painful spot. So, so Mrs. Cox, unless you get your first tattoo on your behind, you can handle everything else. Um, stomach tattoo hurt. Yes, my stomach tattoo hurt. I have it below my belly button and above um, right here. And yeah, it hurt. Uh, G now says, thank you. I will try diluting it with moisturizer. My skin literally looks like a lizard skin now. Yeah, and it, definitely. And we're moving on to a moisturizing part of this conversation. But try doing something like that. And I really think it will help because you just, you don't... The thing is, is that when we have skincare, if we have anything that we're trying to correct, we don't want to go from this problem to this problem. I mean, it doesn't really make any sense. It's like, well, this is fixed, but now I have this problem. So try something like that. And like I said, I think it's going to, it's going to help. Now, menopause and makeup. All right. So let's, let's go back to our sweaty hot flashes and we're sitting there and we're sweating and we, it kind of like burns into your psyche and you remember that, but we have to moisturize, all right? When we get older, we our skin has the tendency to become a little bit drier. My skin, when I was younger, I had an oily skin. So when I got older and I started going through menopause, I, I was like, I was still using very minimal moisturizers. And that was part of the minimal moisturizing plus the powder foundation. I was just like, I looked like the Sahara Desert on my face. So even though we're having those hot flashes and even though that we are sweating, we have to remember the importance of moisturizing because our makeup, whether it is a powder, powder makeup or a liquid makeup, is not going to absorb into your skin if your skin is dried out. So a part of our routine has to be a really good skincare moisturizing part of our routine. So sometimes before I'm putting on my makeup, I'm just like, I'm like slather, 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 put more on, put more on. And I'm just like, oh my goodness, how can I, I I'm just putting layer over layer over layer. And when I'm done putting on my makeup, sometimes I'm like, yeah, well, yeah, no, I'm pretty shiny. But by 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, it's all absorbed into my face and I don't have any issues with my, my makeup for the rest of the day. So I do want to show you two things because Teresa is using the Murad and that's a great product. But another product that I really like that I want to share with you is from Rock. And they have two products, and I've been using both of these. Now, I'm still using my Murad because that goes straight on my neck. And there's different parts of my body need different things, okay? I have my face needs one thing, my neck needs another, my lips need something else, my eyes need something else. And it's not like you have to have like a gazillion different products, but you have to know what part of your face needs what kind of products. So they have these cool little um, capsules. And what this one is, this is a multi-corrector, corrector, and this is a hydrate and plump, and I use this one during the day. Now this has a hydraulic acid, and it's, it's, it's built to plump your skin it and it makes those fine lines and wrinkles look a little bit less and it comes in these really cool little individual applicators now I took one look at these and I'm like do they not know how big my face is there's no way that these little things are going to cover my whole face because I've always gone willy-nilly on my serums and so I used one, and again, I use them every single day, and you cut off the little top, you squeeze out the, the products, and this little capsule covers my entire face and my neck. And I was like, wow, I clearly was using way too much product. So I use this during the day, I wash my face, I get out of the shower, I put this on, 
I let it absorb a little bit more. I put on my daily moisturizer. I let that absorb a little bit more. And then I put on my e.l.f. Woe Glow um, sunscreen. And I let that sit in there. So I have three layers that I've already put on my skin. Then I have my BB cream that goes on top of that. That's a tinted moisturizer. So I am absolutely moisturized during the day, but my skin feels soft. And when I'm putting on my makeup, when I'm doing my contouring, when I'm putting on my BB cream, it gives it something to soak into. Because again, and I, I know I'm repeating myself, but it's really, really important for our skin to be moist enough for it to absorb these, um, this makeup. And then this one is for the day. And then I've been using this one at night. And this one is, um, yeah, Kelly says, I use the rock capsules in. Yes, I thought the same thing. They were way too small. Good. I thought I was the only one that thought that. And so this one is a nighttime. This one is a little bit more, little bit more of a punch. And you, I put this on. So I wash my face. I put this on my face. I put my retinol, my resurgence on my neck. I put on my lotion. And then depending on the night or how I feel, I might even put some Vaseline on top of that because I'm all about slugging. But I have noticed personally that the more of a um, moisturizing routine that I can incorporate, the better my makeup is setting on my face. And it is completely against everything I was thinking. I, because like I said, when I was when I was getting, when I was doing my hot flashes, I'm like, the last thing I want to do is moisturize my face. And it's not going to stop our hot flashes, but it's going to help our makeup that we've put on have a little bit of a chance to, to surviving the hot flash. So it's so important. It is just, to me, it is just so important to have that base of moisture before you start applying makeup. And we think of a lot of it like a nighttime routine because they really, really push nighttime routines. But our daytime moisturizing routine, I think is as equally as important. And it's again, to help with our makeup. Now, another little tip for hot flashes and makeup is get yourself um, waterproof mascara. It is, I, I mean, I used to wear just regular old mascara. And then, like I said, I would have a hot flash and I'd just be like all hot and sweaty. And I turn around and look around and I'd be like, wow, there's my mascara rolling down my face. So not only was I like 300 degrees, but I was 300 degrees with my makeup smearing all over my face. So think about getting a little like waterproof mascara, something that's that you can remove. I, some of those waterproof mascaras are just like you have to get a jackhammer to take it off. But my L'Oreal, I use the telescopic um, lifting mas mascara. Love it. Stays through my hot flashes. And um, it's easy to come off at night with my Pond's cold cream. So you want to do that. And then also too, what I do is I carry with me um, a little elf. It's just about this big and it's just a little blushing bar and it's for your lips, it's for your cheeks, it's for your eyes. And I carry that with me. And if I have a really bad hot flash and I feel like my face is just melted off, I'll just freshen up my makeup and then I just go on. And if you have that really good, again, base of moisture, that light foundation, it's 100% going to help you out. And then I got this product. Um, it's from a company called Pause, P-A-U-S-E. And I will give you one guess on who they market to. Pause. Any guesses? Well, I'm sure you're typing away, but I'm going to tell you right now. This is marketed and um, developed specifically for women over 50 who have hot flashes. And what this is, this is a cooling mist. And it says it instantly cools and calms. It's brand new. I just opened it up. And I'm not going to tell you if I like it or not, because I don't know if I like it or not. 
Um, G now says the L'Oreal telescopic, does it say waterproof on the packaging or just regular one works for sweating? Um, I believe it says waterproof, but let me double check here really quick. Um, <laughs> us old girls. Absolutely. That is exactly who they're marketing at. And here's the thing. And you know what? And I really appreciate the fact that, um, that they're sending it, but I'm not going to say that I like it unless I really like it. Oh, really quick. Let me show you here. I do want to show you. Bum, 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 bum. Let me show you. Here's the little elf stick that I carry with me. And it's just this, it's five bucks and it comes in all different shades. And what I'll do is, like I said, if I have a really bad hot flash, I'll just, um, I'll just freshen up my makeup put a little bit on blush, put a little bit more on my eyes, you know, put it on my lips. But I just wanted to let you know that we need to think in advance. We know they're coming. We have to be prepared. And we can spray ourselves with our paws and we can freshen up our, our makeup. So let me look here because I want to double check this. So let's see here because mask. Mascara. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No. Let's see here. L'Oreal. Because I know I got it. Well, that don't make no sense because I know I got it. All right. Well, I'm not going to mess with you. So let's go here. L'Oreal. Telescopic. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So they have it regular, L'Oreal telescopic waterproof. Okay, so yes. So this is the one that I'm talking about. Bringing it on over. It's actually a pretty good price on here too. So it's the L'Oreal Paris Cosmetic Telescopic Lift Waterproof Mascara. I really like this product. I really like um, I really like this mascara. Now, I just realized, because I went yesterday and I grabbed some, I grabbed the non-waterproof one and um, it seems to be okay. So if you, I mean, if you, I'll let you know tomorrow. But because I'm like, I don't remember mine being blue. But if I, when I have my hot flash today, if it goes all over my face, I'll have to be more careful. But I was just in one of those, like, I had so many errands to run and so little time to do it. I just ran into, um, where did I go? I ran into Rite Aid. I hadn't been in a Rite Aid forever. And so I just ran in there. All right, us golden girls, absolutely. Julie says, phone is dying. We'll have to finish watching later. Thanks for another great life. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Julie. I appreciate it. So again, here's the thing is I personally think, and I know that I do this, and this is why I'm saying it, but sometimes, you know what? Menopause is not fun, all right? There's nothing in the, in, oh, let me finish this. So there's nothing about menopause that I was like when I was a little girl where I was like, wow, mommy, when am I going to have menopause? You know, it wasn't something that I have looked forward to, but it is, it's a reality. It's here and I am going to embrace it with humor. I'm going to embrace it with compassion and I'm going to embrace it as a, you know what? I'm going to be prepared. And if that means, um, Doc was in the room and I'm back. Okay, well, I'm going to um, text you, Courtney, because I didn't know where you were at. Uh, so, yeah, I'll be texting you. Um, so, to me, it's like I'm just, I, I'm going to go into it like I'm on a mission. And I'm on a mission to get through menopause with the most fun and finesse as I can. All right, so this came with a little warning sticker. And the warning sticker says, close and shield eyes before spraying, all right? Do not use this as mace. Um, Teresa says, got to go. We'll watch later. Have a good day. Thank you, Teresa. Have a good day. So you're having a hot flash. <laughs> you grab this and you're like. Ah. 
I'm not going to lie. It smells like that Bianca. That, remember that stuff that, um, but what was that stuff that you'd spray in your mouth when you had bad breath? Yeah. Banaka, what is it? What was it called? Okay, so instantly cools and calms. I think it does that because, oh, you're supposed to shake it. You know what? That's what you, that's what you gotta love about me because I try things and then I read the instructions. So let's try this again. Hot flash. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm hot. Take it out, shake it, shield your eyes, look the other way. Still smells like, um, still smells like mouthwash. Yeah, but I don't know, would it cool me? Yes, Banaka, that's what it was. See, Courtney, I just need you all the time. Yeah, okay, so now... I'm trying to figure out if it's sticky. Okay. I'm going to consider this as taking one for the team. Um, I'm not too sure if I like the smell or the consistency. Or maybe that's because I didn't shake it. But, yeah, I'll get back to you on this one. Thank you, pause people, for sending me my cooling mist. But right now, I'll carry this with me. If w on my next hot flash, I will mace myself and I'll see if it helps. You know, if, if, you, want to, if you want to smell minty fresh, it might be for you. Um, I think, yeah, no, it's, it's definitely got a little, it's got a little bit of a stick to it. And could you imagine being hot sweaty and sticky so but I will try it I'm gonna give it I'm gonna wait until I'm actually you know again 300 plus degrees and then I will try it and I will report so if I have a hot flash tomorrow I'll come back with my report so in all in rounding this up what we really need to do is we need to go into this whole menopause part of life again with honesty with compassion and humor because it's not going to change you know what we're not just going to be like ah i'm over it i don't want to do this anymore it's not going to go away and so let's just embrace it and and be there for each other and be like hey you know what i tried this out and it worked and i'm all about that and right now my i i don't know dude i don't know about this because my arm is like it's almost like spraying banaca not Banaka, but, oh gosh, Bactine. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, no, I, I don't know. I, I, again, my arm is like all tingly, and I'm like, why did I spray on myself? So, but we just need to be there. And I will give you every tip I come up with, because again, I'm going into this like I'm going into like battle. Kathy said some people would pay a lot of money for that. For, I, I, I missed it, for, for what? Did I, for being hot, sweaty, and sticky? <laughs> you know, it, it, is, it is what it is. Oh, or do you mean like, like it going away? You gotta, you gotta fill me in, Kathy, I missed that one. So, ah, yes, that's it. Um, I guess the mint sensation is supposed supposed to for you make you feel like you're cooler no no it didn't that's not the that's not that's not the sensation I want to me I was thinking it was going to be a little lighter it, it it says okay pause well aging skincare is laser focused oh, okay good laser focused on skin changes that come with all three stages of menopause and I'm spitting I don't know why I'm spitting um, and the reduction of estrogen, loss of elect elasticity and texture, brightness, and the density, density, dryness, breaks out, wrinkles, and fine lines. Gee, many crickets. All right, so let's read this again. It says, 
Skincare is laser focused on the key skin changes that comes with all three stages of menopause. I did not know that there were three stages. Did anybody know that there were three stages? I mean, sometimes people ask me, they're like, are you in menopause? What part of menopause are you in? And I'm like, I don't know. I'm not, I feel like a turkey on Thanksgiving and I'm waiting for that little button to pop out to tell me I'm done. I have no idea. You know what? For me, it's like, I think we need like a little meter or something like, hey, I'm three fourths of my way through menopause, but there's no way to know. And if they're telling me that there's three stages, I mean, do, am I in stage one? Am I in stage three? I have no idea. I have no idea. So it says three stages and the reduction of estrogen. It says, okay, so we're going to have loss of elasticity, texture and brightness, density, dryness, breakout. So not only do we have to be sweaty and hot and dried out, but we're going to have pimples too. So you know what? It's just getting better. Dryness, breakouts, wrinkles, and fine lines. Well, it did not really paint menopause very well. It says, shake well before each use. Apply to back of neck, chest, and wrist pulse points as needed. You may experience intense cooling or tingling. There you go. I guess, all right, you know what? Y'all need to stop me. Y'all need to be like, hey, Lonnie, you need to read the directions before you put it on next time. So I apparently am spraying it in the wrong place. It's supposed to tingle. And it says the tingling, which is normal and temporary, used often as needed. Caution when spraying, avoid eyes, lips, nose. Okay, avoid your nose. And I'm sitting here like, <laughs> again, I need constant adult supervision. Um, and it says, other sensitive areas in the event of contact, rinse with water and pat dry for clean cloth for external use only. Okay, well, I used this in every single wrong way. I just used it. Robert, are you expending any menopause symptoms that you need to be cooled down? Okay, Robert's good. So, yes, um, Christina says that would be like spraying hot ice on you. Yeah, no kidding. Um, Got to go. Okay, Kelly. Um, G now says, I definitely would agree with loss of elasticity and skin dryness. Yeah, I don't think that this is going to cure it, but we definitely have to stay moisturized. Um, so Courtney says, now is the time I end up taking off the foundation and go with the tinted moisturizer. Yes, you are going to be so much happier with that, Courtney. And it's such a difference, such a difference. And on this fine note, I am going to go wash off the sticky tingling minty stuff that I sprayed on my arm and I will let you know tomorrow if I experienced any sort of hot flash today if I use that and I hope I gave you some really good ideas and some um, tips on your own makeup some of the products or the majority of the products I talked about are down below in my description Valerie says yes three stages Peri meaning you still have periods. Okay, so I'm over that. Menopause meaning you start stopping the periods and post menopause meaning you have gone over 12 months without a period. Well, I had a hysterectomy back in 2017 and I'm still having hot flashes. So I need to issue a complaint to somebody because I don't know why I'm still hot flashing and Valerie, you're going to be my complaint department. So you're the one that brought it up with all your knowledge. And now you have to listen to me. I'm just kidding. I appreciate your information. All right, everyone. I am going to head off. Um, it is Robert's birthday. I'm going to go over and go live on Amazon for a little bit. And then we are going to actually, we're going down to the beach. We're going to go walk on the beach and Brandon is coming. Um, we're going to walk on the beach. I'm going to swing by free people because I have something to return. And then we're going to go for sushi and I'm going to have some vegetarian sushi. And I think it sounds like a very lovely day because I'm spending my birthday with you all. I'm going to be live and I'm looking forward to, I am looking forward to my birthday with you. Hmm. That requires hormone testing. Yeah. That sounds like too much work. Um, 
G now says, bye. I'm so glad I found your channel. It's great to have someone so beautiful and stylish representing us 50s. Thank you so much. You remind me I don't have to dress like Waste Society says. No, you do not. Oh, hi, Danny. Danny says, bye, Lonnie. Love you. Happy birthday, Robert. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Um, Valerie says, have a great day. Thank you all. I appreciate you very much. Linda says, had a hysterectomy and went right into surgical menopause. Shock the system. Oh, wow. Wow, wow, wow. I didn't even know that was a thing. Um, Anna says, great podcast. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. I appreciate each and every single one of you. Now, tomorrow we're looking at fashion because it's almost fall. I'm super excited to be looking again. And I want to find um, winter coats that are size inclusive. So I am on a mission today. I love you all dearly. Again, my arm is stinging, so I'm going to run. And I love you dearly, and I will see you all tomorrow. 